Hey, hey, everybody, let's talk about the law of diminishing returns. So what is that? The law of diminishing returns is a universal principle which tells you that at some point, the more you invest in something, it could be a technology, it could be a gadget, it could be a process, there's at some point where the amount of money you have to put into something to get any extra benefit becomes exponentially more expensive. So let me give you an example. Let's talk about, I don't know, computers. Do you know that the price difference between the top of the line computer with the fastest processors and the fastest RAM and the fastest memory and the fastest hard disk, you may spend, I'll just throw out a number, $3,000 on the fastest. And the second fastest, which would be maybe $1,000 cheaper for two grand, may only be 10% or 15% slower. So you have to spend 50% more money to go from two, to, you have to go from $2,000 to $3,000 to get that, squeeze out that extra 10 or 15% speed. That is a classic example of the law of diminishing returns. The return that you get on your investment diminishes as it gets higher and higher and higher. The performance gets higher and higher and higher in the computer. Same thing with Fancy cars, for example. Fancy cars, the difference between uh, a $100,000 car in terms of how luxurious it is, how fast it is, and some of these million dollar cars or half million dollar cars is like this. There is a difference, but it's, it's really not huge. And uh, yeah, so that's another example of the, the law of diminishing returns. And you can go on and on and on. Same with coding, by the way. You can go in there and refactor and polish and um, your code base to make it better, to make it faster, to make it uh, easier, make it simpler rather. Simpler is easier. But at some point, you can only, it only goes so far in terms of your return on investment. Your investment, of course, when you're coding is your time. So you may spend... 20 hours to clean up a couple of libraries that you created, several classes of code, regardless of the language. But you may, in cleaning that code up and spending that 20 hours of, of work trying to clean it up, it's hard to say. Depending on the circumstances, you may improve the speed of your code by a huge amount, or you may only speed it up just a little bit. You know, might, you might make it go 10% faster. Now, this comes down to judgment and experience. But I've done both, where I've come to situations where I say, okay, we got a bottleneck in the code. A bottleneck means a place where, you know, the data throughput is uh, squeezed like a bottle. Uh, that's an old expression. So uh, when you look at apps, I'm just going to digress for a little bit. When you look at apps, I always look at apps as being uh, flows of data. Think of it as rivers of data or maybe flows of data like going through the pipes. The pipes of course, is your app, is your code, right? And uh, when you're moving data from one, one place to the next place, whether it be in a web app when somebody logs in, sends a username and password, and then you process that, and then spit back a result, this is flowing data. And most apps, especially web apps, most of the work is just moving data from a database to a web page or uh, an app, and then back into the database again. Think of it as a river, a flowing river of information. That's how I look at it. And then you write the code to facilitate the flow of this information. So once in a while, in some of your code, you're gonna have, you're gonna have one of these bottlenecks where the information's flowing really nice, really, really nice, and it's gonna go squeeze those little holes so it slows the whole thing down, just like traffic on a busy highway at rush hour. So you as a coder, you have to learn with experience and with training, it's more experience to be honest with you, um, you're gonna learn where you can discover the bottlenecks are, and then you can clean up those bottlenecks, open them up in the code so you got a better flow of data. Now, if you're taught properly how to code, you're gonna, you're gonna learn some basic principles that show you where a lot of the bottlenecks are. A lot of times it's with the database. It's always with the database. So you gotta learn to build uh, smart, database structures so that when you're pulling information and you're writing information to the database, it's, it's, it's just more efficient. But that's another story. Anyway, so the law of diminishing returns, 
again, to recap, to get to my point now, is that your investment in anything, fast cars, coding, uh, exercise, uh, whatever, you know, whatever, whatever you, phenomenon, whatever thing you want to look at, there's a point where the amount of investment you put into it will, re will return less and less and less result. So you, as a developer, and in your life, you have to try to figure out where you start hitting you know, that, that point in your investments cycle where the investment, further investment, is not really worth it. So for instance, I was talking about in a recent blog how to speed up an app, instead of going in there and spending tens of hours trying to uh, refine the code, the easier solution and the much faster solution, the much better payoff was in A, migrating from an earlier version of PHP to a newer version, because from PHP 5 to PHP 7 there's a big leap in performance, and B, was to go from an older server, which had older traditional spinning drives, to SSD drives, which are so much more fast, but so much quicker. So we got much better results. So instead of spending 20, 30 hours and the equivalent money in doing that, we spent a fraction of time migrating to more modern servers with more modern PHP, and boom, we have huge, great results as, as a result of that. So that was, a, again, we spent a lot of time, don't get me wrong, in optimizing the code, but it came to a point where I say, you know, it's going to be a huge job to gut this, this one section that's uh, at stakes. I admit it, you know, code that gets old stinks a lot. So, you know, what Microsoft does, and I used to make fun of the strategy, but it actually it's a good strategy. If you got a code base that stinks, but it works well, and you got no bugs, but it's kind of messy. When I mean it stinks, I mean it's kind of messy, and you, you, you're kind of worried to get in there because it can be pretty messy. You don't want to break anything. That's when you use something uh, that. Uh, software developers will call the facade pattern. You basically create a layer of code that sits on top, so you don't touch and disturb this other code, but you create a layer on top of it that adds your new functionality or repairs certain things without messing with the code underneath, because messing with the code underneath could be extremely, extremely a dangerous thing to do. It could disrupt your whole app. Anyways, there you go, law of diminishing returns. It applies to coding. It applies to exercise. Don't, everybody over exercises, by the way. My physiotherapist worked with, with our professional football team up here in, in Canada. And Canadian football is, you know, whatever. But uh, nonetheless, she was telling me that most people overtrain. And so they train like crazy and they actually hurt their bodies. And that's, actually, that's worse than hitting the law at that point of diminishing returns. It's far worse. You're actually, you're actually hurting yourself. So... Moderation is actually a, a, a good thing. I'm going off on a tangent here, but again, learning to identify when you're hitting that point of diminishing returns and knowing when to stop and to consider another strategy. It's like Intel, they were working on their processors to get them faster and faster and faster and faster, and then they discovered it could only, could only get so fast because they're getting too hot and there's all kinds of problems with super fast processors. So they had better solutions to create more cores, more cores. So you have, instead of having one super fast core, you have four moderately fast cores, and all of a sudden you get a much more performant system. But of, of course, when you have multiple cores, the software has to be written to take advantage to, of all these cores. They have, the software has to be multi-core enabled, and uh, of course, most apps these days are. So anyway, going all over the place, I hope you found this vlog useful. One of the, user, one of the universal principles, the law of diminishing returns, learn to identify it. And when you hit it, learn to take another strategy to get to where you, wherever you want to go in code, in life, and exercise, and so on. Ciao, ciao.